Hello people out in YouTube land. Today I want to give some love to the Reaper. So I made now most of the scripts which run with Bitwig for several controllers like the Ableton Push, like launch pads, other innovation controllers or the Akai APCs and so on. Also to work with Reaper. To do so we need to jump through some hoops. So we have a separate application which runs the extension or script code for all the controllers and we need something to talk to Reaper. Um, to do so, we need the SWS extension, which I guess everybody has installed anyway. And I wrote an eel script, which gets started by SWS, which then talks to the additional application. And I like to walk you through all these steps to get you up and running. Talking about some limitations, what's not possible. So there is currently no Linux support since SWS is not available on Linux platforms. So I also had to discuss that and naturally there is no support for any clip scenes and which means also no sequences so what you can do with all the controllers is you can control all the mixing stuff like uh, all your effects volumes panorama and these things and also use uh, the keyboard play or program changes and these things which are implemented for the controllers also only controllers which provide a eight parameter bank concept are supported which means for example the MCU is only the main part implemented, uh, which provides you eight channels because that yield script is implemented in a way that it only has a bank of eight. So some controllers fall out of this equation, but not too many. So what do you do when you download uh, the Driven by Mars Reaper extension? You end up with that file. So you unzip that file. And as you see, it con contains a folder. So we just move that here on the desktop. You can move it any way you want, but you need to make sure that the folder has write access. So you end up with that extracted folder. And if we open up that folder, you will see some more folders. This file explains in detail what you have to do if you want to install things. So you, what I talk about in that video is also explained here in more detail. I will not go go into, for example, installing Repo, SWS and, uh, or, or Java, so you can read it up in detail here as well, if you're not so familiar with doing such things. So the baseline here is we have a Java installed, we have Reaper installed, and we have the SWS extension installed already uh, with Reaper. If you start Reaper, you see if SWS is working. If you have coming up here this extension menu bar, then SWS is up and running. So let's close Reaper again. So what we have to do now in the folder is simply go into the binary one and there is here now a startup script either for, for Mac or here is a startup script for Windows. So if we click that the application is coming up. Also that was really quick now. Let's go back to here that little program. What you see up here this is path to your Reaper software. If this is configured correctly you will see also Reaper is coming up automatically automatically so you only have to start one application and not two separately and you can also choose if you want to have that that it starts automatically you can also turn it off then you can manually click on run or start Reaper separately however you prefer. Uh, this is the communication part which talks to the Reaper but you also would need to, to modify that in a yield script which I will show you also in a second if you would need to change that and for any reason on your computer this port might be already in use which I think Thing should not be the case. Um, so basically you don't need to set up anything here only if you install Reaper to a different location than the suggested one in the installation then you would need to change that as well. So far we had nothing to do just only started and the thing we need to do is if we go now into the actions we need to configure that script. We go to show action list now you can here add a script so let's click here on you and now we need to navigate to our download here we are in the eel folder there is nothing here because you need to change here to eel and then you will see here is a driven by moss main so this is our main script this includes the other scripts but simply select the main one and say okay I want to open it and there we end up uh, with this file here uh, if you search for this 1200 
So for any reason, if you would need to change the port, which should not be necessary, there is a 1200, which you would need to modify if you want to change the port number. But normally you don't need to care about that. Anyway, you can start the script now, close that down and now already uh, everything should work. The other nice thing is to do to run that script automatically when you start Reaper, so you don't have nothing to do, everything works. We go back here into that dialogue, click on here is a script. On the right click, you will get here this menu, this context menu, and here select copy selected action command ID. This will copy this strange number, which might be hidden on your computer because normally these are not shown if it's like this nevertheless you can select here copy selected action command idea close the dialog and then here in the sws extension there is startup actions and here you can say set a global startup action click on that and you will get this little dialog where it says paste the command idea also here go right click and say here uh, this is german here but this means simply paste confirm that dialog and then it says okay this is your new startup action we now run Reaper, run it again from here. The script should be all automatically being started. And you can see that, for example, if you go here and say run, it says, okay, I'm already running. So you can confirm it like that. So we have that script automatically running in the back. That's all you need to configure is attach that script and make sure that it runs automatically. Now we need to add the controllers. We have here, you see your configured controllers. Here you see any locking information if something might be wrong or what's going on. Here we have this add button. So these are all the controllers which are supported here. Um, let's for example choose the Ableton Push 2 and then this controller will turn up and what you see already here in the video it already gets initialized and is working. It tries to find out automatically all the connection information. If not you can select the manual here in this dialog. You can also select to rescan the information. Uh, here are all the possible settings you can have for that script. For tutorials, how all these controllers work, simply refer to all my Bitwig tutorials. They are identical in use. Besides the limitations I talked about, that there are no scenes or clips or these things or sequences. As you see here, it's pretty empty because we don't have a track here. I have here a little example project which we can load up so we'll see what's going on so you get all the nice track coloring you got your volumes here panorama works nicely also scents are supported you can you can play here and if you go here you see there is a little bit of limitation so no sequences here but you got this play view and also this uh, piano view if you prefer that but also uh, yeah clips changes are and program change view is here supported and these things so there's quite a lot of stuff working so all these knobs are working here so you can do a playback record and all these things just simply refer to my other tutorial videos for the specific controllers what else do we have here uh, besides the settings you can remove again a controller and you can turn up the configuration Another word of warning, you can add as many uh, of the controllers you like, but I noticed that this eel script is pretty weak as a backend and it's also not multi-threading safe, so we we'll get some screw up if you add several controllers. So best is to run only one. You can experience if you only press buttons on, on, on one of the controllers. It should also work nicely, but uh, yeah, do some experiments and it's definitely not the best solution to go. And if someone wants to write a better backend, in, in C or C++, uh, yeah, you're welcome. Please contact me. Until then, make some funky music.